Hello guys! Here are 16 tips to help you get the most out of traveling. One, using something like Skyscanner, Kayak, Monodo, or Google Flights. These are websites that will help you to find the cheapest flights. Two, be flexible. You need to be flexible so you can get the most cheapest flights. So there's no point of booking annual leave, say you're gonna fly in August, which is the most expensive time to fly. Why not just see which time is the cheapest for you to fly by looking at Google Flights or Monodo to get the cheapest deal. Three, use an incognito window. So the more that you search for something like flight deals over and over and over again on a normal window, the more and more that likely that the prices can increase because then they know that you're looking for a flight so obviously they're going to increase the flights a little bit and then you're going to end up buying more and more expensive flight than you could have done if you just used an incognito window. Incognito window prevents your cookies to follow you so you can find cheaper prices at the same price every single time when you keep on searching. Four, use hostels when you can. Okay, so you think hostels are horrible, there's too many people, you want to be alone, but sometimes you just need to find a place to lay your head. Not all hostels are horrible, there have been some really nice hostels that I've stayed in. If you're a bit particular about sleep, staying with men or guys, you can get a female only accommodation where it's just females in the room. I got a room with four people, four females. Obviously the lower the go in the amount of people who share the room, the more expensive it is, but it's still very affordable. I'm just gonna be a bit particular like that. So, you know, I'm just gonna be, you know, on that. There are also rooms in the hostels which are single occupancy, which means that you will just share a room on your own. So you still have the luxury of being in the communal area with everybody who is backpacking, etc. But you can go back to your own room and be alone. Five, if your hotel or hostel includes breakfast, stock up. Yes, stock up. Eat your breakfast, fill your belly, then grab some extra stuff. Make a sandwich, put that in your bag. Bring some fruits. These things help to spend less money as well. I found it more resourceful because when I'm out, when I was out um, in places which weren't really near shops, when I was in Bali, in Nusa, the Nusa Islands, then at least I could get my sandwich that I made in my bag, out of my bag, and eat it on the side. Obviously, it's up to you if you wish to want to do that, if you want to do that, but it's cheap, it's budget friendly, and you're already paying for the damn thing, so you might as well just eat it and use it. Just saying. Six, if you need inspiration, there's lots of inspiration out there which is easy to access. Pinterest is really good. Lots of people produce blogs on where they've been before, how to get there. They even might even set a little itinerary how to get there. The best restaurants in the area, where to go, where to drink, the perfect place to take a picture, they've all got it in there. Instagram is also good but I feel like Pinterest is just up there, it's just up there to find places to go. There's plenty of places that you can find, pin it to a board on Pinterest and then you can research it later when you're more committed to go on that holiday. Mm -hmm. Seven, download Google Maps or Maps Me. These are really good maps to help you find where to go when you don't have any internet or any Wi-Fi. You can use it offline, download the map when you have internet so it will download the area, pick out places where you want to go and highlight it on the map using like a little green flag normally on the Google Maps of places you're interested in to go. And then when you're offline, it's already got the streets loaded. You just walk, try and walk or drive to your destination and it will still work. It is really good and it was so helpful when I was traveling. When I was on my downtime and I was roaming around, I always used it to pick places where I wanted to go. And as I, as I said, I ended up in the place and you know, it was really helpful, okay? Eight, make an itinerary. Get the most of what you need out of your holiday. You don't always have to make an itinerary, but I try to make one just so I can highlight places that I really, really want to visit. I don't have to stick to it, but at least it's there. I can relax on days where I want to relax, get active, go to all those places that I want to go to. And it's just really good. If you can't make an itinerary, again, use Pinterest. If you really can't think of somewhere to go, companies that have already made their itinerary over and over again, and it's well established, Jed Ventus and something like Kentucky or 
can take it I'm not too sure which way it's pronounced you can use their guidelines their itineraries pick out the best days or places that you want to go and then add some add some places add some things you don't have to pick everything you don't have to follow it tick by tick but at least it gives you guidance on places where you want to go to use up most of your time nine these are for the girls get a moon cup it is a life saver moon cup you can swim you can wear white you can wear white you can wear whatever you want to wear and don't have to stress about a bin don't have to stress about anything probably about from period pains if that's all you have and it's very eco-friendly some places like in India for instance I forgot my moon cup I left it at home in certain areas where it is holy there are no you cannot get any sanitary towels you cannot get any nothing i had to borrow it from people in the group moon cups is really good but like i said eco-friendly easy to use once you try and figure out how to use it my tip is try use the moon cup when you're not on your period get used to put it in take it out put it in take it out when the moon cup is wet or lubricated it is much easier to insert so hence why it's very easy to put it on when you're on your period but anyway <laughs> moon cup is very useful it's a lifesaver it's eco-friendly it's not cheap in them initially but it's cheap and very cost effective when you use it in the long run 10 be smart with your money if your bank does not have free transactions using foreign money when you are abroad invest in an account like starling starling has been very useful for me when i've been traveling they do not charge any transaction fees when you are exchanging money or using money abroad the only time it will cost you is if the bank when you are abroad is actually charging you for the exchange apart from that they don't charge you so it was really good very cost effective i didn't hardly had any charges and if i did i would um take out a well not significant amount or take out money that i would need for the week and then spend it accordingly or when I've tried different types of ATMs and then when I found one that will allow me to use it for free, I'll just stick with that ATM and find that wherever I am in the country. 11. If you're travelling for a long amount of time or a short amount of time, set up a direct debit to go into your bank account that you are using with your travel money. I found this so useful. I just thought, just in case someone steals my card details or my card gets lost, then at least that account I know is probably gonna have zero pence. So what I did, I set a, an amount that I want to send to my account every week when I was traveling every week, and then I would withdraw that money every week. So I know that I had that money on my person unless I, in case I went to somewhere that was a bit desolate, I had still had money. This was very helpful because when I got home, I realized that somebody was trying to hack into my account and take my money. but there was no money in there so all they was able to take was 14 pence which the bank you know refunded to me it was really uh i just found it really funny because i thought you ain't getting no money out of this because i spent the money all week so i found that really useful really helpful and like i said if i lost my card then i could use my backup card i normally bring two cards i bring the one card which is the styling bank account which i use and the other card which is another bank account or card that i have at home so if one got lost i would always have another one to back up that one would probably incur charges and fees you can inform your bank that you will be going abroad to different places because if you're using it in too many different countries they will block your card because they're feeling that your card has been lost or stolen so do inform your bank that you are traveling just in case you have to use it but I never had to use it when I was out abroad and direct debit was a less lifesaver 12 take emergency money with you and when I'm talking about emergency money I'm talking about money that is easily can be easily um, exchanged in a foreign country so pounds is really easy for us to exchange in a foreign country so I talk about maybe 250 pounds in notes not in a big wad of notes i took 50 pound notes and i hid it in different compartments in my suitcase on me or around me it could be a bag within a bag within a bag it could be in your makeup bag which has a little bag inside that bag it could be in your jewelry bag it could be in anything somewhere that doesn't say i have money in this in this place do not store your emergency money in your purse i repeat do not store your emergency money in your purse. Because it's obvious, isn't it? 
13. Be respectful in the religious areas that you're visiting. It's just best to have a long sleeve shirt or, you know, a t shirt, pants that cover your knees, uh, a scarf just in case you need to cover your head so you can experience the culture and sometimes they have really nice areas where you can take pictures so just be mindful about that if you don't need it at least you've brought it in your pack in your bag and if you didn't have it then you probably would have to buy it so just just bring it anyway it's just useful 14 get your vaccinations in advance Travellers are not the only people who use vaccinations. Get your vaccinations in advance. A lot of the time, vaccinations have shortages. If there's a shortage, they're not gonna give it to the person who's a traveller. They're gonna give it to people who need it, like healthcare, patients who need the vaccinations. So just be mindful about it. It doesn't matter if your holiday is six months away, a year away, you can still get your vaccinations in advance. It doesn't have to be within a specific amount of time. Most, some vaccinations last for 10 years, five years, two years so i'm sure you're well in range if you get it the year before or six months before just get your vaccinations in advance vaccinations can also be expensive so make sure you set money aside for it as well and if you're unsure if you need vaccinations or not um, a really good place to go in the uk is no more travel 15 bring repellent that has at least 50 percent deet in it 50 percent is the recommended amount you can get these sprays from boots or body care body care is more cheaper than boots you can stock up on them if you need them you can use them if you don't need to use them you can use it for another time they also have it in a spray repellent as in a spray and they have it as a roll-on as well i felt that the roll-on was very useful because it didn't have that after choke effect <laughs> So you can pick which one you prefer to use. Some people bring the armbands where you can get them from somewhere like B&M, like two for a pound, or they put on the arm or they put on the bag. But I haven't used them before. Most of the time when people have used them, I've never got a mosquito bite and I'm not having to wear any deed. So I can't say for from experience how that is, but I have seen a lot of people use them so you can try them out as well as bringing something to help prevent the mosquito bites bring something if you do get a bite from a mosquito or an insect i've used a cream for many many years my mum's used it so i have used it and it does help soothing with the the bite and with the itch as well there's probably other creams that you can use just to make sure that you have one on your person so when you do get bitten you can use it 16 bring a first aid kit it doesn't have to be anything that's highly specialised. You can buy it from somewhere like B&M, from Tesco's, Asda. Uh, the, most of them have a small aid kit that you can bring. And make sure you also bring something like Diorolite, which can help when you are dehydrated or you've been having vomiting or diarrhea. It will help to restore your electrolytes. Bring something that will help you stop going to the toilet, like Imodium, and help you go to the toilet, like Senna. Again, you don't have to use those two specific types of medication. You can bring something that will be best for you or if you've got any medical conditions and you're not too sure, you can go to your GP. But make sure you follow the instructions on the packet. Don't overuse them as because they are medications after all. So just use them how it's labelled on the packet. But you may need it when you travel. You might not need it, but you might need it. And when you do need it, you're going to want it. Trust me. Well, those are my 16 tips. I hope that you found them useful. If you've got any other fantastic tips, be sure to comment them in the box and have a fantastic holiday. And I will see you again in another life. This life called YouTube. <laughs>